Thank you, Colin, and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, one of the things about uh, the major games is really uh, the, 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 as you've heard today, that huge call on resources. And bridging the gap, which I'm going to talk about, is uh, something which should uh, address part of that major demand level and in particular looking at the skilled security manpower area in an industry which has a limited capacity to supply. I think there's always this feeling that um, the private security industry has lots of people available all the time. Um, well, they do for their clients, uh, but not in terms of uh, spare capacity. The, um, the UK events industry is similar to that in, in other countries, in that it's, it works on a seasonal basis. And as such, it has peaks and troughs in the amount of demand uh, placed upon it. And typically, a UK uh, event and stewarding uh, company will be working to its maximum capacity for about three months of each year. And this means that in its model of operation, it's geared just to those three months. And hence, they have a significant amount of downtime. And this leads to them having really a large number, the majority of their staff are in fact uh, part-time workers. But they do need to keep a core of experienced management because in recent years uh, more and more um, crowd management has been put uh, into the private sector and it does take uh, quite significant experience. And so some of the companies will say, well, we've got, a, we've got capability to handle up to 50,000 people, but we, we've only got uh, people who can actually handle 100,000 people, we're down to one or two. So that, that management structure becomes very important in, in the delivery of events. Now, one of the things uh, that, is, uh, that they mainly are involved in is in stewarding. So our event companies in the United Kingdom are basically involved in stewarding and they do some security on the outside of events. And probably about a third of any company's workers are actually uh, security staff, um, and, uh, whereas the majority are stewards. So that has a, quite a, a, an impact when you have a major event, uh, as we've had in London, where in fact security has been uh, the greater demand. Also, most events um, last just a few days and are orientated around weekends. And there are very few events that happen within the UK of long duration. And so the industry is also structured just to meet that short-term activity. And the Olympics, of course, are very different, requiring significant activity over a period of about 60 days. So, for example, if you look at uh, football stadia and football clubs, really they're just doing them at, uh, at weekends or in the evenings, and the staff are orientated around that basis. And major events can also have an increased level of threat against them, and we've heard uh, Chris and, and Robert talking of that. So there, hence there becomes a need for additional training. And as has been the case in the Olympics, where the security staff have had to have tra extra training in counterterrorism and in search techniques. Now, if I take, go back to, the, uh, to 2005 and look at the, uh, the bid that we made for the Olympic Games, um, we, we came up with a, a figure at that time of about 5,000, uh, uh, 6,000 staff, of which 5,000 would be, uh, if you like, new staff, because the industry only had capacity for about 1,000. So that was 6,000 at that time. We know how that has grown um, uh, over the period from then. So the, the problem set uh, for the industry was really where we were going to find those additional people just for that period of the games. And one of the things is to, uh, that is quite common is to actually look at uh, the education system. And looking at the education system, uh, further education appeared to be more appropriate than higher education. And that's because young people in further education are at a skill level required um, that is likely to be used at, uh, in security and in studying. And they also have very excellent training facilities uh, which are local um, to, the, to the requirement. And an early meeting with the further education sector demonstrated how enthusiastic they were to meet this challenge. And they were also keenly interested in developing the link with industry. They actually saw this as being a very important move for them because they saw great legacy 
could flow from this after the Games. And the Home Office were early supporters of this initiative, and, and great thanks has to go to Robert for his uh, support uh, in, 1990, uh, in, in 2006, because we, we did require um, uh, uh, early funding to help this, uh, this progress uh, through. Now this slide illustrates how quickly colleges from across the UK agreed to become part of the, vin uh, the venture. And I think just by looking at that, you just suddenly begin to get the feeling of scale. When all those colleges want to be part of it, Belfast said, you know, we, we, we really we see, the, we see the importance of this, we want to be involved in the games, but we also want to be involved with industry and get a legacy uh, from it. And uh, training needs were quickly identified and, and colleges quickly built in the qualifications um, and I won't go through all those qualifications, but you can see um, the, the qualifications that are required. And some of them they were able to build in to, to coursework. Some of them they've had to get extra um, uh, tra training facilities in, for instance, for the door supervisor qualification, which is the security qualification. At the end of the park, we had to bring uh, trainers in from outside. Um, but just looking over uh, to the right there, you can see uh, work experience was actually very important. And here's a, a group of, um, of uh, students come from the uh, Cardiff Further Education College, and they were deployed uh, at the Ryder Cup uh, last year. And this slide shows students from East Norfolk College who are working as uh, stewards in Norwich. And the reaction from the employers, public, and young people themselves has actually been absolutely fantastic, with many of these young people already having found regular work in their local communities. And the list of the events they've been involved in has been very impressive. And anything from the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, the Royal Wedding, uh, and the Isle of Wight Festival, the V Festival, the list goes on. So these young people are being utilized uh, by industry across the whole country. And here we can see the actual number um, uh, of colleges and universities that have been involved in the project. Over 9,000 students over 18 years of age have achieved a door supervisor qualification. Over 11,000 students uh, achieved a, a student qualification. 5,000 of those uh, received then counter-terrorism training and 478 then received rapid scan training in, in x-ray uh, search training as well. And reports back uh, have highlighted delight actually in the quality of the students. These are, are young people who really want to work, get on in life, and absorb training very quickly. And as the games come to an end, we then begin to look and move into legacy. The, initi the initiative has shown the power of linking education to industry. And we're already linking with national employers to give them access directly to this great pool of talent which lies within our further education system. And it's just more than security. There's catering, retail, hospitality, engineering, IT, all of those things. And they have their places within the colleges right across the country. And they've all been united in this initiative. But it's just not unique to the United Kingdom. Most countries have got colleges in their local towns. And this initiative could be a great way for them also to link employers with young, skill, skilled people. And also a, a way that the, company, the, the countries can uh, adapt to the needs of industry. Um, and, uh, and also it's being looked at in, in various countries and we're also um, putting it forward for the uh, uh, Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. And I hope that in the next few years we'll be able to demonstrate a completely new way of getting young people into work. When you look at the, the 10,000 that we've trained, this, uh, just for the security industry alone in the, in the UK, this will change the way that uh, the dynamic um, uh, and the, the quality of the people that we employ. So that uh, really brings me to the end. I hope I've kept within my 10 minutes. And uh, uh, if you would like to know more, then do please grab me at any point uh, during the sessions or at lunchtime, and I'll be very pleased to give you more information.